Bye. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Erica here with Climate Ready Home. Today I'm going to be setting up a rain barrel. I'm going to show you guys the situation I'm working with, my goals in this project, and then step by step how to set up a rain barrel. It's a pretty easy project and let's get started. So this is the basic setup of what I'm going to be doing. Um, it's going to be a rain barrel on some cinder blocks and then there's going to be some flexible tubing that is attached to the downspout. And then on the left hand side here, this is where the downspout would go into the ground and out to the street. Um, and this is where I don't want the water going into. Um, it's the same setup in the front yard and I will talk about that a little bit later. And I'll post below this rain barrel here. This qualifies for a rebate in Southern California through the Water Smarts program. Um, I'll post all those links down below so you can do it yourself. It's a pretty basic rain barrel, pretty sturdy. Um, there is a little valve in the bottom so you can release the water into like a, a bucket. There's one in the back end so you can change the configuration and then there's one on the top here for either an overflow or a way to link multiple rain barrels together. Okay, so this is the downspout that I'm working with here. Um, it is kind of the same setup. It goes underground and then there's a pipe that goes all the way to the street. Um, it doesn't have any chance to go into the soil. Um, so what I want to do is I want to have that water go in the side yard here. And these are all native plants with really deep tap roots. And so they'll be able to soak up all of that water that comes out of that downspout. So the first thing I need to do is to remove this larger plant. It's a red yucca. It was here when we first moved in. Um, it's basically sitting in the spot where I want the rain barrel to be. So I'm just going to dig it up and scoot it over. Eventually I will be taking these plants completely out and replacing them with natives um, because I want the whole front yard to be native. Um, but I'm also going to be firescaping this area as well. Um, both of these plants here, the, the one with the purple flower and this bigger one, they're both fire resistant. So they are pretty good in terms of firescaping plants. Um, and the names are red yucca is a big one and the smaller one is society garlic. I apologize for the lighting throughout this video. During the fall and winter months, the whole front of the house is in sunlight like all day long. And so there really is no good time to film. Anyways, instead of throwing out the plant, I just planted it because it does provide some um, nectar and food for wildlife. Okay, so enough about the plants. So what you want to do is A, move the plants, B, flatten the earth. There are a lot of different ways you can do this. Some people go hardcore and put sand down and some layers of this and a layer of that. I don't do any of that nonsense. Um, just flatten the earth, it's fine. Um, for us specifically, we're going to not be storing water for a long time, so it doesn't really need to be all that like legit. Um, we're just going to be storing water just for a few days and then dumping it onto the landscape. That being said, rain barrels do get super heavy when they're fill, filled up with water, full, <laughs> when they're full. Um, so you do want to put a little bit of effort into making sure this is nice and level and then maybe like every other rainstorm go out there and just make sure your rain barrel is, is still level. And then if not, you know, just move some dirt, move some things around and then re-level it. If re-level, whatever, make sure it's level. So with the project here, I used two of these blocks. If you have a larger rain barrel, you can definitely use more of these bricks here. Um, two for me is just fine. I would not go with one. One would not be enough. Now, if you look at the ground here, this is like a lot of mulch. Mulch is gonna break down. It's gonna kind of get all wonky. Um, I'm totally fine with it because I have no problem coming back in and just um, like re-leveling it. But if you're not looking to do work after the fact, then don't lay directly on top of mulch. I would get down to the dirt level. Dun, da, da, da. And that's what you should have. So pretty, all leveled. All right, let's go, next step. So the next step is to put your rain barrel on your bricks. Um, you A, want to make sure your rain barrel is centered on your, um, your blocks. And then B, you wanna orient which direction you want your rain barrel to be in. So as you can see here, um, I am just changing out some of these attachments so that the, the valve is pointing the direction that I want it to point in. And for me, I wanna point it towards the landscape. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I just want to reiterate to make sure that it is centered on these blocks. Um, if it's not centered, it can fall over as it starts to fill up and that can be a hazard. So just kind of like scoot back, look at it from different angles and just be sure. And then grab your level and make sure that it, the rain barrel like on the top part is completely level. So you know the whole system is nice and level. So now let's talk about the tubing. This is it here. Um, I have two of them and the brand is right here. There you go. Um, now each end has a different size. So the right hand side is larger, left hand side is bigger. Ah, there's two now. And they do this so you can fit one inside of another um, like so. Now this is the wrong orientation. This is gonna be important when you actually go to set it up. So when the water is flowing downhill, 
you want the, um, the, the upper one to be inside of the lower one. That way you're not gonna have water spilling out of the edges. So I'm trying to show you guys that here. <laughs> it's an unfortunate position. <laughs> Anyways, for example, if you had it oriented like this where the one that's inside is on the bottom, um, you're gonna have water spilling out of this uh, tubing. So you definitely don't want it to be like this. So you want the, the upper tube to be inside of the lower tube like so anyways this is important don't waste water so you're also going to want to saw a wrench and then some tin snips i hate the sound of the metal on metal from the saw so i use the tin snips for the majority of the cutting and i'll throw some links down in the description so you can you know find these at the store so now take the flex tubing and open them up and move them so that they're in the position that you want them to be in. Um, this way you know where to cut your downspout. Um, and th they're kind of hard to pull apart, so just be aware of that. And you want to put it in orientation that makes it the most um, like stiff. If you have one of them that's really long and one's kind of short, the longer one's gonna be kind of like unstable. So just kind of try to get them to be equal. Um, anyways, just put them up, uh, do a dry fit, and then see where exactly you have to start cutting. And um, I make a little mark with my scissors. And you want it to be a little bit lower, so you want the downspout to go inside of your tubing. So that's where you wanna cut. With the line marked, I went ahead and started um, sawing the downspout. I would definitely recommend wearing glasses, safety glasses and some gloves because there's like metal. Um, I didn't, I should have, my bad. Um, but just get it started with the saw because the sound is so, so, so bad. And then once you have a hole big enough, um, go in with the snips and then just start cutting away. So once you cut through the downspout, there's going to be a spot that's going to be attached to the building, right? Well, like right here. So you want to use the wrench and just unscrew um, whatever this attachment is called. I'm sorry about the camera work. It was really hard to film this. So release the downspout from this uh, flap attachment. I actually left the attachment attached to the building. I didn't want to deal with having to like um, seal it or anything like that. So I left it on the building. Um, and then that way you can pull the entire downspout off. Yay. And then you're going to want to clip, 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 make sure there's not a whole bunch of like, like, um, sharp edges in the future. You don't cut yourself. Um, I just, I had to replace my uh, brain barrel here and then now it's time to attach the flexible tubing. Now when attaching the flexible tubing, remember that the, um, the, the lower pipe needs to fit over the upper pipe so you don't have water spilling everywhere. So you want to fill the flexible tubing over the metal downspout. Um, again, so also you don't um, end up cutting yourself on that metal edge right there. And then just kind of move it around until you have it um, in like a configuration that works well for you. Here is a look at the final configuration for the tube. Okay, so now I have to deal with this here. Um, I can take this off, but there's a nail that's into this in the stucco. And if I do take it off, I'll have to seal that up. And I'm just not really like mentally prepared to do that. So all I'm gonna be doing is taking some zip ties and um, securing it closed. So there's no sharp edges showing for my son to hurt himself. And then that will solve that problem temporarily. All right, and that's it. This is the finished product. I did forget to mention one thing, the flexible tubing, it actually connects to the center so that it's um, not just like sitting in there. Um, I forgot to show you guys that in the video. Here is the finished product of that little flap. There's no sharp edges showing at all. And then um, I'm gonna keep this here, but I'm gonna cut it down to the ground so it looks a little bit nicer and then I'm gonna cover it, but that's gonna be staying here. And then this is a close up of what it looks like just on top of the rain barrel, just sitting there. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you liked it as well. And thank you so much. See you next time.